to you to die with your eyes You know it gets me every time I swear I wish I could read your mind Cause I ask the same question every night So just breathe That's all you need I can't describe your eyes But they're as blue as the sea Your heart, it beats in perfect time with me Baby, you know that I want mine If we get no rest till the sunrise Again, this light shows your face I can never be the same I plan to love you all my life What would I do without your eyes? The way they look at me Your smile creates the temple I tend to be used as your pillow So just breathe Breathe in, release, you know that's all you need I can't describe your eyes but when they're looking at me my heart, it beats and I can't seem to dream We have come together to celebrate their uniting in Christian love, their hearts and life. This is possible because of the love of God and the love that He has created in them through Jesus Christ. Hearts and spirits were drawn together before today by the Lord of all creation. Two lives are not united by ceremony, but only in the power, love, and the grace of God. John and Kirsten are here to publicly declare that because of Jesus Christ's love for them, they too can truly love one another. As God demonstrated His love in Jesus, John and Kirsten demonstrate this by giving themselves to one another and for one another. Who is it that gives away this woman to be married? I do. Before we start the ceremony, Kirsten and John have a few words for Ryder. So just a little backstory before I read this poem. Ryder, whenever he was born, got a teddy bear from my mom, and he calls it Teddy One. And then a few years later, he found Teddy Two. And so I wrote this poem for him, and we have a surprise for you. Since the day you were born, it's been just me and you, us two, and oh, the things that we've been through. But since the day you arrived, Teddy One has been by your side. A few years later, Teddy Two was found stranded in danger, and with your big heart you searched for his owner, to no avail you discovered him a loner. Taking him in, no questions asked, Teddy One had a friend at last. So on this day, we want to introduce Teddy Three, for he represents Mr. John, you, and me. So today, two become three as we extend our family. John and Kirsten, no other human ties are more tender, no other vows are more sacred. John, will you have Kirsten to be your wedded wife? Will you love her, comfort her, honor her, and keep her in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, Keep yourself only for her as long as you both shall live. I will. Kirsten, will you have John to be your wedded husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only for him so long as you both shall live? I do. John, what symbol do you bring as a pledge of the sincerity of your vows? A ring. 
Kirsten, please remember that a ring is the seal of the vow that you've made to one another. When you are absent from one another, the presence of the ring reminds you to be faithful and to fulfill your vows to John. John, now place the ring on your bride's finger. Kirsten, what symbol do you bring? A ring. Don, this ring is a seal of Kirsten's vow to you. She presents this to you as a token of her submission to you in Jesus Christ. This is a symbol of leadership and privilege. Kirsten, you may now place the ring on John's finger. For as much as John and Kirsten have consented in holy wedlock by the authority committed to me as a minister of the Church of Jesus Christ, I now declare you husband and wife. Don, may now kiss your bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the John Driscoll family. <laughs>